Hey guys, uh, this lesson is the second part of a uh, function, so inverses of functions. Uh, so here we're going to um, uh, verify that um, uh, a function and, an, and its inverse are inverses of each other. That, uh, that's in here, and then we're going to do a couple of application problems in here, okay? All right, so here's some symboling, new symboling. This is called a composition function, and this is read uh, as f of g of x right there, okay? So, for example, if we had f of x equals 3x plus 4 and g of x equals x squared, let's find uh, f of g of 2 and g of f of 2. Okay, well, let's, find, let's first find um, uh, um, g of 2 and f of 2. Okay, so we'll plug in 2 here and plug in 2 right there. Okay, so f of 2 would be 3 times 2 plus 4, which is 6 plus 4, which is 10. And then g of 2 is uh, 2 squared, okay, and then which is 4 right there. So uh, f of g of 2 is just going to be, since g of 2 right here equals 4, then f of g of 2 is the same as f of 4. And since f of 2 equals 10, then then g of f of 2 would be just g of 10 right there, okay? So let's plug in 4 uh, right here. So when we plug in 4, uh, we get um, uh, 3 times 4 plus 6, which equals 16. And now we're going to go ahead and plug in uh, 10 into our g function right here. So 10 right here, 10 squared is going to be 100 right there, okay? All right, now um, uh, this lesson doesn't ask you to do uh, that stuff, and I think you've done that before. If not, that's okay. So, but to verify that two functions are inverses of each other, we need to show that the compositions of f of g of x and g of f of x both simplify to x, okay? All right, so let's uh, let's do that here. So let's first find the inverse function of, um, uh, that this says f inverse from the last lesson, for f of x equals um, uh, 2x minus 2, okay? So from the last lesson, here's what we had to do. So we're going to go ahead and substitute in y for f of x. So there it is right there. And now we solve for x, okay? So I'm going to solve for x. So let's get rid of the minus 2. We'll plus 2 to both sides and then divide by that 2 right there. Okay, so now we solved for x. Now we're going to switch the x's and the y. So when we switch that, we get that. And then we're going to replace this with f inverse right there, okay? All right, so the second part now is we're going to use composition to verify that f of x and f inverse of x are inverses of each other, okay? So we'll do that over here. So that just means we're we need to show uh, that f of f inverse of x equals x and f inverse of f of x equals x. That's what those guys say. So what we're going to do is plug in uh, here's f inverse of x. We're gonna to show uh, we're gonna plug this in uh, for this x right here. That's what this says right here. And then we're gonna plug this function in for this x, and that's what this is right here. Okay. And these uh, both should simplify to x. Okay. So here uh, those twos cancel right there. So we're left with x plus two minus two, and the plus two minus two cancels out. So there we are with that part right there. And then over here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and 2x minus 2 plus 2. Okay, the minus 2 plus 2s cancel out. So 2x over 2 is uh, the 2s cancel, so they both equal x. So they are uh, inverses of each other. So you're going to be asked uh, to do that on numbers 9 and 10 from yesterday's assignment, okay? All right, so let's now graph both of those and uh, along with the line y equals x. So here's the line y equals x right here, okay? And what happens is, is this is our mirror, okay? The mirror image of uh, this function and this function when we graph them, okay? So here's our functions right there. All right, let's uh, put this into y equals mx plus b form. It's a little bit easier to see right there, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do this guy in red and this guy in blue, okay? So this is 2 over 1. So here's our plus b. Here's our plus b. Let's do that. So we'll go down to minus 2, put a blue dot, and go to plus 1 and put a, a red dot right there, okay? All right, now we'll use our slopes, okay? So for the blue dot, we're going to go up 2 over 1. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1. And then for the red dot, we're going to go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Okay, so when we do that, there they are right there. And then connect them up. And can you see that they are mirror images? The blue uh, line is a mirror image of the red line over this line, y equals x. And that's what happens with the, the inverses. They're 
Oh, always uh, mirror images over the line y equals x. Okay, all right, so um, now this is example B that's on page 271 in our textbook. So, and, it, uh, and the directions for these say, for the given function, state the domain of the inverse function using set notation. So that's, that's those funny brackets. Okay, and then, uh, and then find an equation for the inverse function and then graph it, and then we need to interpret that. Okay, so here's, the, here's um, uh, example B on page 271. A car's uh, gas tank, which uh, can hold 14 gallons of gas, contain, already contains 4 gallons of gas when the driver stops at the gas station to fill the tank. The gas pump dispenses uh, gas at a rate of 5 gallons per minute, so here it is. So... Uh, G is going to be um, the gas, uh, well, we'll talk about that, but here is um, five gallons per minute. So the time is going to be in minutes, and we already have four gallons in there, so that's where that function comes from. Okay, so that gives the number of gallons G in the tank as a function of the pumping time T, okay? T is in minutes, okay? And G is in gallons, okay? All right, so uh, the directions say uh, state the domain uh, of the inverse, okay? Well, the domain is, uh, is the same as the range of the function. So the range of this function is given right here, okay? So remember, y equals mx plus b, the y part is the range. So here, the g part is the range. So here is um, here is y equals mx plus b. So this is our range right here. So the range of this function is between 4 and 14 gallons because she, she already has, or he already has, 4 gallons in the tank and, and has a maximum of 14 gallons right there. Okay, so, so that means that the domain is the inverse of that. Okay, so the domain is the same as the range uh, because inverses, remember we switched the x's and the y's, so, so the, the domain uh, of the inverse is going to be the same as the as the range of this guy. So it's going to be between 4 and 14 gallons. And here it is in set notation. So this says right here, the set of G, and this vertical line says the word such that, the set of G such that, um, uh, G is between 4 and 14, and we're including those uh, numbers right there, okay? So that's set notation, okay? So now let's go ahead and find the inverse. Okay, so here we are, all right? So so uh, there's our function right there. So we're going to go ahead and um, uh, we're going to skip this step because it's already taken care of. This is y right here, y equals mx plus b. So this says solve for x. So we're going to go ahead and solve for t right there. And that'll be our inverse, okay? So t will be our inverse. All right, so we subtracted 4 from both sides, and we're going to divide by 5 from both sides. So, so there's our inverse function right there, okay? So now let's go ahead and, and graph that, okay? So let's put that over here. Let's put this into y equals mx plus b form. So this is 1, uh, 1 g over 5 minus 4 g over 5. This 5 goes for both those pieces right there. And remember, the domain is uh, restricted between 4 and, and 14. Okay, so when we graph this, we'd go down to negative 4 fifths, which is down here. But since the, the domain is restricted between uh, 4 and 14, here's our domain right here. And they gave us this graph, so it kind of gives us a setup of how we're going to graph this right here. All right, so we're going to put a, a point right there at 4 right there, okay? And then, and then, um, uh, so, so I know that um, the four negative four fifths is down here, somewhere down here. You know, if this is one, negative one would be right there. Negative four fifths is right, right above negative five fifths, which would be negative one. So it's floating down here, right there. But since it's restricted, we got to start right there, and then we'll go up one over five. Okay, so. Up one and then over five. Okay, this axis is going by two. So here's two, here's four, so here's five. I'm going to do it again because we're going all the way to 14. Okay, so that looks like it's at nine right there. So let's go up one over five, and that's going to be our restriction right there at 14. We got to stop it right there because our domain restriction is between those guys right there. Okay. So when we graph those lines, there it is right there, okay? All right, so now it said, remember it said to interpret that. So the inverse function gives the pumping time 
uh, in minutes. So here's our inverse function. Let me get my pointer right here. Here's the inverse function. So it gives the pumping time in minutes as a function of the amount of gas in the tank. So here's my inverse function. It's T stands for time. So it's the inverse time as uh, how much gas is being pumped into the tank. Okay, so T is a function of G right there. All right, all right, let's try another one of these. Okay, so this one is uh, your turn on page uh, 272. Okay, remember, here's our directions. It says, for the given function, state the domain of the inverse function and using set notation. Okay, and then find an equation for the inverse function and then graph it and interpret the meaning of the inverse. Okay, so when we interpreted the meaning here, this was a function with t, so that was our time. Our function was um, our, our, our time with how much gallons are being pumped into the, uh, the gas tank right there. Okay. So here we go. A municipal swimming pool contains 600,000 gallons of water uh, and is being drained. Okay, the amount of water in thousands of gallons remaining in the pool after time t hours is uh, after draining begins with um, uh, this right here. So W equals 600. Remember, it's in thousands of gallons, so 600,000 of gallons minus it looks like uh, 20 gallons right here for each hour right there okay it's gonna take a long time so so the range um, uh, uh, of w is uh, restricted okay so remember the range is going to be the uh, we want to find the domain of the inverse and so the domain of the inverse is the same as the range of our of our beginning function right here so our range which is w right here it's between, uh, we can have zero gallons uh, of water or we can have 600,000 gallons of water. So remember, this says the set of W such that W is in between zero and 600 and we're including zero and 600. Okay, so this is the domain of the inverse right there. Okay, so that's going to be our inverse. So now let's go ahead and solve this equation uh, to find the inverse. Okay, so we're going to solve for T. Okay, so let's subtract 600 from both sides. There we are, minus 600 on both sides. We're going to divide by that negative 20 right there. All right, now graphing, that looks kind of ugly right there. So let's go ahead and uh, put both of those over negative 20 right there. Okay, so it's uh, W over negative 20 minus 600 over negative 20. Okay, so so these uh, zeros will cancel right there, and 2 goes into 60 30 times, and this will become plus 30 because we got a double negative right there. Okay, so our time is uh, negative 1 20th uh, W plus T. Okay, all right, so... Now we just found an equation for the inverse function. Now let's go ahead and graph that. Okay, so let's graph it over here. And they gave us this graph right there. Remember, you guys, the domain uh, of this inverse is uh, between 0 and 600. So it's between 0 and 600. Now let's go ahead and uh, graph this plus 30 right there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a right up here at plus 30. That's my y-intercept right there. Okay, let's do that. Okay, and then now the slope, you guys, the slope is negative 1 over 20. Well, look at this. This is These are going by 5s right here, and these are going by 200 or 100s, okay? So this would be 5 over 100 right there. Well, let's make it 10. Um, uh, that negative 1 20th will make it uh, 10 over 200 right there, negative 10 over 200, and we can graph that. Okay, remember, we're going down to 600, so it's going down here. So if we go down 10, go over 200, okay, down 10, go over 200, and then keep going down 10 over 200, and there, there's our graph right there, okay? So um, uh, when we graph that right there, uh, that's our graph. Now we have to interpret that. Okay, so here's a here's a uh, our interpretation is the inverse. The inverse function gives the time t that's in hours of the pool that's being drained uh, as a function of the amount of water yeah, that's in thousands of gallons right there. Okay, that's remaining in the pool. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. If you're in my class, I'm going to give you that assignment. And this is just going to be an extension of what we did uh, on the last assignment, you guys. We did numbers 9 and 10, but there was a sentence in there that said to verify that they are inverses. And I said, skip that part, so we're going to do that in the next lesson. So that's what I want you to do is keep that assignment. And your two equations, I want you to verify that they're inverses of each other. 
and then do numbers 11 through 14, okay? And then on 13 and 14, you guys, they give you a, a function graph. Do you remember the vertical line test? The vertical line test, if you had a vertical line, let's see if I can do that right here. If we had a vertical line, and, and we moved it through the equation right there. Let's pretend like there's a graph right there. And in this vertical line, if we, could, if we can intersect the graph in no more than one spot, then we say it's a function right there. So when they give you a function graph, the horizontal line test will do the same thing to talk about its inverse. It, is the inverse a um, uh, is the inverse going to be a function also? Well, just take that the horizontal line test on, on that graph, and that will tell you if the inverse is, is going to be a function. Okay. All right, and there's your answers right there. Take care. Hope that makes sense.